Welcome back to another Duck Hunting Loadout 2023. <laughs> All right guys, we're gonna start with the actual sponsor of this video. I'm a partner that we've worked with for a long time, probably five plus, six years now. Actually, a personal friend of mine has been from Motion Ducks. And uh, we have a special deal for you guys for this video and through this season. If you go to motionducks.com forward slash MVM, it'll take you to a separate page where you can buy an actual motion duck spreader which allows you to attach seven decoys onto one motion ducks and i'll kind of pop up on the screen here where you guys can see what it looks like we all know how it is it can be blowing 30 miles an hour all summer long as soon as duck season starts the air is stagnant and you can't get no motion in your spread so this is our favorite tool and uh, right now i just have the four birds on it but what i wanted to kind of point out and why i left it like this is a lot of times me and thomas when we're packing in somewhere we're not pushing a cart we don't got no way to get that stuff out there we're not in the boat we leave it like this set up have our backpack on and then throw this over our shoulder and we walk out to the pond one more thing to add to that is you can put in the code mid valley and get an additional 10 percent off that already deal that you're going to get if you buy the ultimate spreader on there so check them out i promise you, you won't regret it high and dry sense these and uh, for the environment that we hunt in, i think a lot of duck hunters that hunt water it's a great tool but you can turn these loosen them and it has little buttons that clicking right there and you can raise this too and then extend it but like you can hang your gun on here off the top here hang your blind bag i mean there's all different kinds of things that you can do but it's a great tool and it's super easy to get out and really tough but for the environments that most of us duck hunters are in it is nice to keep your stuff out of the water I stole an idea from my brother it's the Avery uh, decoy backpack he bought one of these first he's how long have you had yours I don't know a, a like, long time like yeah. six years yeah like since long you started. enough to get it re -sewed. exactly he loved it so much that he took it into a seamstress and uh, had it re I don't remember where it was tore at but uh, anyways you can hold six in one side and six on the other so when it's full it will it will stand upright and then it's got the backpack straps on the back and then man it's so it's so awesome thomas was never complaining about carrying his backpack i had a, a the refuge runner and no offense to them but that thing is like super uncomfortable in my opinion i've showed it on these load up videos before but this is mine i bought this last season i love it it's got the two side for like a mojo pulsators whatever you want <clears throat> and i actually put my blind bag i think thomas does too i unbuckle this and slide it in between there and buckle it back and i mean you have everything on your back plus the gun holder on the side slip your gun right in there marsh stand always have that on us just in case you get tired those long days just one of my favorite dog stands i use for rocky brand is mo marsh that's the one i highly suggest i've used some other ones they're a little bit more rickety this one locks in place and has the feet on these that are really good about not letting it continue to sink in mud this is the one i've used and i've used for a long time i've tried them all and that's my favorite one this is almost too good to share but uh the heavy hauler they've been around for a long time it's so easy it's like throwing up a pop-up tent basically you pull it out of this bag you unfold it and it just pops up into an actual half blind one of the things i'm real excited about this season and i've already used it once and man it looks good and i've actually had them on the podcast and if you guys haven't listened to our podcast or heard of it it's the mvm show check it out on spotify apple Podcasts, any platform that does podcast but tyler came on he's from colorado and he built these flashbacks oh my goodness man guys these are it's almost a secret weapon duck hunters we don't want to share sometimes our little secrets but I'm not saying we're the only ones that use them but man they're money what happens is is these come over the top with the battery operated and then it comes back through and it makes them look like they're diving for food. And there's some other variations you can set them up just to make ripples, but man, they look so good in the spread. I've only got to use it at the beginning of the season once and very impressive. And they last a long time too. I wanna say the battery can go between 12 and 16 hours. One of my dog lines that I use for Rocky, I don't use it often unless we're hunting like a pit and I need to get them hidden. But it's really convenient because you can just unbuckle this right here on the sides. It's kind of like an accordion and boom just pops up got a ground blind for your dog works great all right this is our cart we use this is a rogers brand i think ties you've had this a couple years now at least um haven't really lost any parts or pieces yet still works really good comes with these straps um, and tie downs that actually come in handy we've used them a lot i think with this remember what size this is is this the medium extra large and it works with our rogers uh, uh cart there so when you got a lot of gear you're refuge running and uh it's too much stuff to carry it on your back you got a lot of decoys or maybe you're hunting with three or four guys or something a jet sled this size especially with dog gear is 
is uh, almost essential. You can't really use anything smaller. If you watched our video from last year, you knew that we were running FA um, decoys. We'll be running them again this year. Uh, we love these decoys. We got Pintail, Mallard, Widgeon, Teal. Show you their Widgeon here. Might be a little dusty right now, but they look awesome. Their paint been holding up really, really good. And if you've watched us at all, you know that we love their rigs. They're um, coated steel, these egg weights on them. They'll just last forever. You can get several different sizes. I think we run four foot for the most part. These rigs are amazing. They never tangle. They blend well with all the environments and they, they don't uh, scratch your decoys up. All right, this is one of the spinning wings we use. This is an Avian X uh, Powerflight Mallard. We've used this a couple years now. We don't always use spinners, but when we do this, works awesome battery life's good you can do intermittent or just a solid uh, spin pull up my guns real quick you guys already know and the browning a5 still love this thing never did change the chokes up too much i still run my factory choke and i always felt like i shot pretty well with it but this is the wicked wings version still holding up pretty good maybe could use a clean but love this gun gun i used mainly last year my Benelli Ethos Cordoba 20 gauge. As you can tell, I got the shot cam on here because like I said, I've been using this mainly uh, last year. I did get the uh, high and dry little quick hanger. I don't remember the exact name for this, but makes it pretty nice if you're hanging it on their uh, pole that Ty showed you a little earlier. This thing shoots very well. Never had any issues with it so far. Like I said, only got one year on it, but Love this gun. All right, you guys already know we love our bismuth. This is basically what I shot almost 100% of the time last year. I can't say enough about it. You guys got to at least try a box. When you get on target, these birds just, they just don't cripple. They're just dead every time. Quick look at my calls. Lanyard was done by Quack Lanyards a couple years ago. He's a great guy, makes quality stuff here locally. Lairs T1, Lairs Hybrid, Polk Pattern, Wood Whistle. These two here are uh, Billy uh, John Quinto. I got these from him a couple years ago. Um, got a teal and widgeon. This does pintail. I don't always have these exact calls, but starting to acquire more and more calls. What reads do you use in your layers? My hybrid, I use a 355, and I'm still kind of shopping around for the T1. T1, I just got um, this off season, so I'm gonna start playing around with it this year. Right now, it's just the factory. You guys know probably from last year, I got the 28 gauge, basically same gun as Thomas's, except in the 28 gauge, the Benelli Ethos Cordoba. Um, love this gun. This gun is precious to me. Got me my Eurasian Widgeon last year. If you haven't seen that, you gotta check that video out here. But anyways, I just love shooting this gun. Um, only thing I would say about it is it does have porting on it, whereas the uh, Super Black Eagle 3 28 gauge does not, but they didn't have that when I bought this. And I will say it makes it a little bit louder for sure. but gun is shoots awesome love it for this gun i use the heavy 12 heavy shot heavy 12 it's a tungsten blend um this is actually not the one i use i grabbed the wrong box but i'll still use it this season but i like the three inch because this gun shoots three inch i shoot six shot is what i like with the one ounce shot charge going at 1350 per second so that's my ammo of choice for this gun for my 12 gauge Old Betsy collar. I've had this one for a long time. I uh, got this done last year by Acadiana Coat. Um, does an awesome job. Because I got the Heavy Shot logo engraved in here and then the. Oh, no, dude. Look at Slow me on that. Oh. Stay zoomed into this. Let's get some <laughs> of this action too. Oh, yeah. Old Mid Valley Mercenaries logo engraved on the side. So, got the Pattern Master Code Black Duck in this. That is something that's probably going to be changing. I got the shot cam on it. You'll hear why here on the next gun. But out of this one, I'm like Thomas, I shoot the heavy bismuth for the most part out of this. But I'm also, we tried this out last year. Uh, this year is the heavy metal extreme. This is a blend of three shot for steel and six shot for tungsten. Uh, some nasty stuff. I shot it last year. I don't know how much Thomas did, but it's, it's amazing. And it's a lot more affordable than if you were to ever try to go buy heavy 12 or something like that. It's definitely a lot more reasonable. So check that out. That's what I'll be using a lot this year. That that and heavy bismuth. As far as my 20 gauge goes, still got the Franke Affinity. I love this gun, shoots great. One thing that I changed about this year, and you can check that pattern video out right here too in the little, the little uh, card, but I switched to a Moeller decoy choke. You can ask anybody that's seen it. You can ask Thomas, the pattern on that thing was wicked. I mean, I've never seen anything like that. 
Yeah, literally. I'll just put it this way. I'm not gonna say any names, but I tried some other brands and had some other things in here, and it, it's not even, these other chokes were not even a quarter of what this had, had done. And there's reasons. If you wanna know why, I have four part series with Jim Muller, the owner of Muller Chokes, talk about this, and I don't wanna drag it out, but you gotta go check that podcast out. It'll blow your mind, and it'll change your whole way of thinking of how you do things and what you do, and what you've been told, and what ammo companies say. It'll totally change everything, and I'm so glad I met him, and became friends with him. Not only did he say what he said in the podcast, but then afterwards I tried the choke out, and it was proven on paper, like there's no lying. So another thing that I talked about last year, and I love this thing I did all season is the Public Pursuit. Um, I found them on Instagram. I think they got a website too, but look up Public Pursuit, and basically it's a journal uh, for all your hunts, and it, it's made for duck hunting because it has like the times you wake up, the wind, the weather, the decoys you used, has everything that you would want to track in it, places where you can put notes and draw diagrams, whatever, and I, I really like it. You want to open that thing up? You want me to? <laughs> No, is there coordinates in there? Oh yeah, <laughs> the old prayer rug. Leaked info. I know, leaked. All it takes is somebody to freeze frame that, mm -hmm. screenshot you that. You know who you are. You're hunting right where we're at. I can't ever go, I don't know why, I just love. Especially when it's 100 outside. Yes. Nice. Dude, I'll tell you what though. There's a uh, thumbnail for you right there. Mm. Tell you what. <laughs> when it's cold, son. <laughs> When it's cold on that boat, uh, there ain't nothing that works like this thing, I'm telling you. When you're scooting 50. Yeah, next year. Big shout out to Chase Waterfowl. I used that to pattern the 20 gauge on that video you're gonna watch, but these are sick. Simple, but everything on it that you need. It's got a 30, 20, and a 10 inch circle. You need 100 pellets to be lethal on the vitals of a duck, so that's why when you pattern, you use a 30 inch, but it's got the information on the top left, the shot, the shotgun, the choke, and then on the top right, it's got pellet hits inside the uh, 30, 20, 10, and the distance you're at. I've already used a bunch of them. Get them out at chasewaterfowl.com. So that's made the lanyard, huh? What? The whistle. This whistle? Yeah. I don't know, you tell me. I did want to say one thing about this lanyard. <laughs> Freak, dude. Unbelievable. Ducked up gear, that's D-U-C-K-D, and then up gear. Uh, he makes, made this lanyard. I'm switching lanyards this year. This this lanyard to me is just like nostalgic and pretty sick. It's leather. This whistle is from Shannon Kelly. He does uh, widgeon whistles and pintail. This is brand new, something he just prototyped, but I think it's pretty sick. It's that amethyst color. And I'm actually gonna be running amethyst this year. If you can't roll your tongue to do some whistles, this has got a roller in it already, and it's just a, it's pretty neat, it's custom. Like I said, this leather lanyard, I got a different one coming, I kind of customized it a little bit more, and I am running the amethyst this year, like, not, probably not all year, I don't want to beat it up too bad, but I am going to run it, and I do run this with a 370, a 1.370, and then my hybrid, which is a 350, which is factory, but yeah. It was, it was actually really hard to get these colors. And then uh, for my widgeon whistle, same as Thomas, the Billy Jean Quinto uh, Acme whistle for the widgeon whistle. One of the things that's nice that we have this year uh, for my good buddy, Chase McCullough, he sent me uh, what his brand that he's got now is a shoddy gear, and this is a shell holder. There's nothing worse than getting rust on your shells and, and down in your blind bag. Even our waterproof ones, sometimes just moisture being in there, if it gets on your shelves, you're gonna get some rust. So you can fit a box and a half or two boxes in here if you want. Pretty sick, you can go check them out and grab one of these. Big news for this year and honestly, super stoked and super excited to announce that we are now part of the Kuyu team. It's a company out here in California that makes the top line of gear, period, bar none. And uh, I'm about to show it to you, so let's check it out. So this year at Kuyu launched their waterfowl line. They've been making top of the line big game hunting gear for quite a while now and uh, we are beyond stoked to be part of the Kuyu team. Well, I'll just go over the waiters real quick. So Kuyu partnered up with Sims. Um, if you've checked in the Sims, Sims has been around a long time and known for like fly fishing, trout fishing. A lot of fishermen use that. Actually, I know a lot of duck hunters uh, in New Mexico and some other places that really go through some tough stuff, um, how they gotta hunt, and that's what they live and breathe by, they swear by them. It's pretty cool that Kuyu partnered up with them. I'll do some videos later on it. I'm not gonna go in super detail. Yes, there is no zip. I wore waders on my whole life without a zip. I'm only until I got the Sitkas did I even start using zip, but the material, I will say it does feel thicker and tougher to me than Sitka. I'm not saying it's better. I'm just saying it feels thicker. The boots, a little more stiffer than the Sitka boots, but very comfortable. And there's a reason for that. You can also go listen to that podcast and uh, Sean Ayers 
from Koo, you one of the top guys there, talks about why and the shank in the boot and why you kind of need that. It's very comfortable though. The shoulder straps, kind of show you how, that's kind of where it goes across the back right there. And that's where it buckles in there. Very comfortable, doesn't affect your shooting at all. It's got a zipper pocket inside, waterproof for like uh, your phone or license or whatever. I can't wait this season to use these and try them out. So I showed you the waders, but we'll go kind of from the base of the setup that they have and work our way out as it gets colder the more pieces that you put on this is the 145 it's a made out of merino wool it's one of the base layers it's got a hood on it really comfortable great base layer look up merino wool that's that's why they went with that i'm super stoked about these pants they don't really call it the waiter pants they call it the strong fleece the 290 i believe they're really comfortable did you try these on mm -hmm. just the way the pocket design is i don't know why i just like how that pocket's designed elastic at the waist you can tie it from the inside Here's what the inside looks like. Tom's kind of feels, mm -hmm. I'll, I'll have to see that. He almost thinks it's like the gradient, huh? Did you think it's gonna be that hot? Or kind of in between the heavy in weight. In between the heavy, the heavy weight, weight and the gradient. And the gradient. That's kind of what we're thinking. But again, we got to put it to the test this year. So on this, they got the side zipper. So basically you can breathe, you know, it's just when you're hiking or whatever, those long hikes, let some air flow through. And the one thing that's sick <clears throat> is when you put your foot through this, it automatically, your heel catches that right there. As soon as you throw that through, boom, locks in. Basically, you got your waiter pants and don't they don't creep up anymore. And if you're gonna wear them around town, you just pull that over right, real quick and you don't look stupid. I mean, me personally, I didn't wear the underpants for the Sitkas around. Thomas is gonna show you the rest of as you build out. But I just wanna go over this real quick with you. This is the Kodiak 6600 and it's the duffel. It doubles and has backpack straps. So you can either just carry it with the handle or you can wear it on your back. It's airtight and waterproof. So it's kind of, I don't know, my thought was that I've talked to Thomas with it about when you go on a trip, say you have your duffel in the back with all your clothes in it. Before, if it started raining or snowing, you're like, pull over real quick, throw your duffel back inside, everything gets wet. Now it doesn't even, it's not even an issue. But there's tons of room on there. Mm -hmm. Plenty for, you know, a week long trip, clothes mm -hmm. or whatever. All right, moving out towards your outer layers. This could be used as a mid layer or an outer layer. This is the flyway. They thought about a lot on this, guys. It's not just another jacket. Really, really comfortable jacket. This color here is an ash. So here's their waterproof jacket. They call this their HD Flex Storm. Again, there's a lot of adjustments everywhere in the hood, bottom of the jacket here. And then also they put pit zips. If you, uh, you need to do some walk-in in this and you don't want to get real sweaty because this thing will lock in. This here's in Velo. Love this pattern. So I'm more excited about this probably than any other piece of uh, Kuyu that we're going to use this year. You guys already know that we've been using dry bags for our blind bags for a while now. Probably will never go back to the normal you know, cloth dry bag. This is Kuyu's backpack style dry bag. Completely waterproof. There's a outside zipper here compartment inside the main compartment they got an optional little bag here that you can take out and you can either hang it maybe if you do some timber hunting you can hang it on a tree or maybe if you're using that high and dry pole you can hang this it's got two pockets on the bottom basically for boxes of shells and then another compartment up here for just whatever you want to store i can't wait to use this it's probably going to be my, the most used piece this year by far so this year we're going to be in a pro drive 1848 love this boat we got a um, removable bench seat another thing we love with this is the spud poles um, you get somewhere you get up on a sandbar or whatever and you just want to you're in some shallow water and you want to stay right there those spud poles are amazing love those also we added some more lighting to the boat we got a bigger uh, he headlight spotlight in front we got interior lighting and rooster lighting on the back of the boat here. We got green in the interior and the exterior. Love that color, love the lighting. We got 40 horse motor here. It's got full power reverse. Use that thing several times already. Definitely comes in handy. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Another loadout, another year, another duck season. It's kind of crazy. I think this is like our sixth or seventh one. So hope you enjoyed it and we'll see you guys on the next one.